Welcome into Leafs hockey talk. Oh, tough Leafs start. Talk. I'm not. I'm not JD. It is hawk. Welcome into Leafs hockey. I am Justin Talk. I'm not doing this. Hi, Sam. How are you? Hey, Borny. I'm doing well, buddy. Thanks for uh, hopping in here for me. Thanks for doing such a great job hosting. Uh, I gave you the A chair because I knew you're such a wonderful professional host, and <laughs> we didn't get through the first sentence. I blew it. I blew yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Leafs lose four to three. Uh, they hit. 316 posts over the course of the hockey game. Uh, didn't think they played great. Didn't think they played terribly. Could have won, <sighs> could have lost. Sam, this is the worst possible game for us because, you know, they could have been better. They weren't awful. Do you got any major takeaway for me? Uh, you, I'll give you two different perspectives on this game. Please. I'll start with the very obvious one. And if I was just a straight up fan, this is what I would rest my head on the pillow feeling like tonight. Being like, the Leafs are far and away the better team to me yeah. who slept walk through a lot of that game and then turned it on in the third period, kicked the crap out of them for majority of the third period, hit yeah. six or and seven posts, including the seventh one that actually went in the net off of Tavares' stick, yeah. and they lose by one and, you know, whatever. We move on. The more critical eye to me, if I would say something that's driving me crazy about this team is the goals at the start and end of periods that has just been a trend all year. Mm -hmm. And it happens again tonight where they're asleep in the first minute of a period where they score. They know that the Flyers are going to be, you know, all horned up because Torts made it about himself and scratched the captain. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, that building, they need a win. You know, they're going to come out like that. You sleep through the first shift and they score right away. I don't love starting this line anyway, but that's a different thing. And then the second period, they get one in the first period in the first minute again. And to me, that's just clear lack of attention to detail. Maybe you can give the coach a bit of a, you know, give him a bit of a cri uh, criticism for not having them ready. But that's the two different sides of the game that I look at mm -hmm. where it's just like, it, it's, it's really hard to get bent out of shape, but there's a few little things that annoyed me. Yeah, okay. You know, the goal that does go in to start the game, to me, that's one of those like, okay, how does that go through 900 things? They win the opening draw. You know, maybe it's preparation. Maybe it's bad luck. Whatever it is, I, I get. It's hot. You know, I, I will say, I get a little annoyed when you talk to people and they're like, you can't give up goals in the first minute. And they talk to them, you go, oh, you can't give up a goal in a final minute of a period. Oh, you can't give up a goal in the first shift after a power play. You get, you're out of time. You know, like you want to not give up goals. We know. At what like, portion of the period would you like give to give up them goals? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I get, you know, the, a couple go in kind of seeing eye shots there. I would say my main takeaway or my main point of frustration is like yeah. you're building towards playoffs here mm -hmm. and there's no cohesion, no chemistry. What line do you like? What D pair do you like? What mm -hmm. what do you feel like you can't break up right now on this Leafs team? And is there a single thing you can give me? Yeah, you can't break up Bobby McMahon, bud. You just can't. You can't <laughs> you break him up. him up as a person. He <laughs> needs to continue to exist. Whatever line Bobby, whatever line 74 is on is the best one to me. Yes. So wherever you put him uh, at this very moment when he is absolutely feeling it, it feels like he pushes a line. I, like Matthews with... Uh, Bertuzzi and Holmberg, I like what's the opposite of chemistry? Like they're like they look like they all hate each other. They look like they don't even look at each other the entire shift. So that I will doesn't say, work. Go ahead. Yeah. It's been devastated to the put Matthews with anyone and they'll be fine. Camp. Yeah. But who like, is me? Yeah. But anyone is, you know, not just like anyone. I, <laughs> you don't you know, literally like, mean any person. I, like Bertuzzi is a great complimentary guy. When you're playing with two skill guys, right? Mm -hmm. Like to me, that's why they brought him in here as the type of guy to play with Matthews and Marner. They started tried it at the start of the year. It didn't work. Keith mm -hmm. has alluded to the fact that they're gonna try it again when uh when Marner comes back. But like, yeah, to answer your original question, there's not a whole lot that I even really like know what happened tonight. I, I don't even yeah. really know who played with who, like. There's times well, where Dewar's playing with Robertson and Camp's playing up and Domi's playing with Matthews and they're just searching and losing two incredibly important guys in Marner and less so Yarncroc. 
they really feel like they're lost at the, in the yeah. forward group right now. I think you're bang on. I it's just there's not anything where you're like, I don't like the Tavares Nyes Robertson no. line. Is that what it was supposed to be? Like at all. I don't trust him defensively. And then yeah, there's there's not a ton to like. The one thing you mentioned is that Matthews and Domi ended up on the ice and Jobo, mm-hmm. maybe we can run this pack. Matthews, the one thing I know, he seems to like to pass to Domi. And maybe it's not having Marner, so he wants to be more of a facilitator. But like a two-on-two, you know, puck goes to Matthews. He finds a way to get it back to Domi. It's like he trusts Domi's shot. And I'm not saying he doesn't trust Marner's shot. But when they've been out there and Matthews gets his puck in these offensive situations, this one, I mean, he's got the goalie dead to right. And, rip it. I mean, yeah, you're Matthews. It's Samuel Urson. Let's have it. But I like the idea that he's, you know, he's looking for to do something other than shoot it and in fairness Domi's in a great spot to put one away there so again he defers to Domi on that one and yeah this one just hits uh is it York's leg there a little bit unlucky but you know throughout the game anytime these two got on the ice together Mm -hmm. and yeah here's another one where you know Matthews ends up with the puck it's behind the net. He finds 11 like he just seems to look for 11 to me every time he was out there so I don't know if maybe we could do Domi on the wing when Marner comes back and see if those two can play a bit with him or not, but he seems to like playing with them. Yeah, for me, tomorrow night in Washington, Domi is glued to Matthews' wing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I thought Domi, I thought, sorry, Matthews improved tenfold as soon as he got a guy up there that he's willing to kind of snap it around with. Like, I just yeah. don't think he wants to pass to Bertuzzi or wants to pass to Holmberg. And like, you've been really good at hockey, you're, you know, in your life. And you're playing with a guy that's worse than you. It's like, I generally don't want to pass to that person. Like, that's kind of <laughs> how it works. You know, it's like, if I yeah. pass it to that guy, the play's probably going to end. I thought Holmberg was generally pretty bad tonight. You know, he takes that awful penalty late in the third that period. bad, eh? D-zone stick up high. Sla- what is that? He just slashed him in the face. I was like, what, what, yeah. why did you do that? I, I just, I generally didn't think he was great. So they really want Holmberg to work. They seem, they've gone back to it, even though they've, they've moved it off. But all these conversations we're having kind of just lean to the point that, you know, they're this they're lost without Marner. And Mm -hmm. it just really goes to show, and myself included, as a guy who's been like, you know, trade Marner or for something or do this, whatever, you know, it is nice to get a little reminder of all the stuff he does for this team. Like he for sure is is an engine for them. But at the same time, to me, this is this team has been built around four guys, right? Mm -hmm. Four forwards being really good. If any of them are gone, you're like every other team with three good players. You know, Mm -hmm. like that's supposed to be your advantage. You lose John Tavares versus Montreal and all of a sudden you're less effective. Like you just, it hurts to be without any of these guys. So it is one of the major flaws in a plan when you're so dependent on a few guys is you miss any of them. I'm sure if it's just Marner and no Matthews, you're like, who's the trigger, you know? Uh, To that end, you're counting on these guys to be really good. Nylander is so confounding in games like this because he makes plays, he turns pucks over, he, you know, shoots one in the net, he doesn't cover a guy. Like, he is a high-event guy tonight both ways. Yeah, I I thought Mike Johnson on the broadcast did an awesome job of breaking down the one where he's just way above it in the defensive zone. Yeah, early in the game. Doesn't even, like, make an attempt to get below the guy. Just, like, that's the McKee-level back check beer league (laughs) going for the little stick lift. Like, horrible defensive play. And then you watch this, and it's, like, the seconds on a stick, bing, bar down. I do remember, oh, that's such a nice shot if you're watching on Sportsnet Plus or YouTube. It's just beautiful, top blocker, love it. But... I do remember, and you know, the seasons all mesh together, but I remember the, like I go to the conversations we had in years past that Mm -hmm. we were really heading into this, the full season of a consistent Nylander last year. And I remember that being one of our big conversations being like, he was so consistent all year. That was the biggest change for him that he brought it every night. And then the last two to three weeks of the season, I remember being like, oh, here it is. It could finally arrive. The, the, the Nylander sleepy part. And for a guy that, you know, you know, they're, they're in a playoff spot. He's on his way to a career year. He's shooting it in the net most nights. Like he's just going to have these sleepy moments where I do trust him to turn it on once the playoffs come. And I've, I've had enough of a sample size of him turning it on when the playoffs start. And was he have, he's been on 
fire offensively recently. Like he's he's just been out of this world, but I really do trust that he can flip a switch. I do, but it hasn't been pretty defensively and stop the toe drags at the top of the, at the blue line. Another breakaway. Again, I think three of the last four games, he's He's turned over a puck high in the zone. Stop. It's a, it's wild. The one thing with him is like, you don't have any worry that he's going to shrink in the big moments, Mm -hmm. you know, like that Florida series, the temperature got turned up and the team couldn't finish. And every time he touched the puck, you were like, this is the Leafs chance to score. So you do have some belief that regardless of the situation, he's going to show up and be, be a part of it. But yeah, he scored the goal to send it to OT in that game five, that huge emotional moment. He comes down off the wing. No one could get anything by Bobrovsky. He shoots it under the bar, gets the building fired up. Like he has playoff like trust for me. I yeah. trust that he's going to turn it back on, but some of these nights, bud, it's like, holy, can we just, can we bend the knees in the defensive zone? Will he? <laughs> <laughs> he wants, he honestly, he wants to do so. Uh, Jobo shared with us. Willie has 27 points in his last 20 games and his dash three over that stretch. That is the most Willie thing of all time is that get lots of points. It's kind of going in both ways right now. You hope when it gets to playoffs, it only goes one way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and some other good stats there from Jobo. Holmberg only played nine minutes tonight. So obviously Sheldon Keep didn't think he was great either. Yeah. In our group chat, one of the things that uh, Yumi and Kip agreed upon tonight, uh, too many bad D on the Leafs right now. Edmondson's yeah. slow. Uh, Brody struggling. Like, just not enough guys where you're like, he's, he's playing well. Yeah, I mean, this is the number one reason they can't go. You, you, you believe they can't really go that deep, right? Is this, and like, I want to be, I want to be as positive and optimistic about maybe no, the you're right. when the mics are off in real time and you're talking to people, you go, I, this D boy. Oh. Yeah. Like it's just like, you know, Edmondson going back on pucks against Tippett. I'm like, Oh my God. You know, yeah. TJ Brody in his own zone. What on God's green earth was that play between him and Riley that led to that goal in the first minute? Yeah, it's just, they just... both, what happened? <laughs> I, it's just, they're both it NHLers. Off. Yeah. Like, I, like, oh my, it's just these two guys to get like, this oh. honestly is zigzags hockey. Stone cops, it's like Dan Lee out there. It's just, I can't believe how bad that looked. I just, I, why does this keep happening? I don't know, but Samsonov is, is he trying to get a call by implying the guy hit him? Is that why he's shrinking into the width of a, an open door? Uh, yeah, like what like, is, yeah, I think he turning was trying to side with the, yeah, I think he's trying to sell it a bit, but then he's also turning on the floater from Frost, is it, where, mm. he, man, he's making himself real small. I don't think he was bad tonight, and I'm not saying this is, a, you know, it's on the hook for him, or he's on the hook for the loss, but yeah. you do lose by one. I didn't think he, you know, gave him any extra tonight. No, four went in. So just yeah. just to the, the stick on the, the defensive conversation. Yes. I, sure, you can you can – get hot in the playoffs and you get out of a hot goalie and you get the momentum going and guys step up in situations. But to me, it's just, this is the like, special teams we can talk about as a worry, but the power play can get hot. You know, there's crazier things have happened than that. But at the end of the day, all, it's just, this decor doesn't seem good enough to me. Like, I, so I, talk, I, talk me through this scenario where it works. So here, here's the best I can do. Brody gets some rest down the stretch and it makes a difference the way that Tavares mm-hmm. suddenly looks rejuvenated, you yeah. know, when he was down for a little bit. So a rejuvenated, uh, what's his name? Brody. Brody. Yeah. You know, you get McCade playing at a really high level and Lilligren playing confident hockey mm-hmm. and Labushkin and Edmondson playing mean and, you know, Riley being playoff Riley. Like if everyone plays well, you can talk me into it for a round or two. A couple yeah, that- rounds. For sure. And, yeah. you know, guys get hurt and on the other team too. And yeah. they have to Doors lean on other guys. For like, sure. There's, there's extenuating. Like, like, listen to the conversation we're having. If the stars align with the moon on the, you know, the, the 6th of June, like it's like, yeah. there's no, I just, I, I want to believe and I really want to have hope because yes. I, I, you know, regardless of what people say to me in my Twitter mentions that I'm Mr. Negative, like I do want this team to succeed. And oh, it's yeah. really good for everyone if they do, but I just, I have a hard time believing it's going to be How about enough. this? Can I sell you yes. Simone Benoit? Yes. He was Can good I tonight. Con- 
and he was good. So sits out a few games. I I thought he was like trying to make a statement tonight. Here he comes down off the wing and just hammers one. <laughs> you know, I'd love to see him shoot one in the net, but you know, like the way he leaned into it. I thought he skated the this puck well up, up through the neutral zone, taking it down below the goal line. You know, he gets a little aggressive in a play that almost comes back to haunt them. But I love that he's playing. He's in there. He's chasing it. Like, <laughs> honestly, I thought he was really good tonight. I thought he was one of their best, if not their best D-man. It was hilarious, too. Uh, another shout out for Charlie. Wait, for MJ on the, on the call. You know you're not doing it when you're just when the commentator's oh. laughing as he's as he's driving the puck up the ice. He's just like, yeah. oh, he's laughing at him. But I yeah. I agree. But that's you know, a great one. He cuts off. Is it tippity cut off here? Absolutely. Take direct angle. Thanks. No, tuck you in the corner. You know, like that's good hockey. So, I mean, what happens tomorrow? Labushkin feels better. Then what? Because you can't take him out after the way he played tonight. I think Edmondson's got to sit. I think Edmondson's got to be aware that this is kind of where he's at in the rotation. And also... You know, Edmonton's a bigger guy who's in his 30s, who's gone deep. It's not the worst thing in the world for him to sit a couple nights out and know yeah, that he's competing right. for a spot. So I, I think Benoit did enough to stay in. Um, and, but yeah, it's... Do you care that they didn't get the, the points? Are we worried about points in any direction, winning or losing? Or Well, they're going to make the playoffs. And yeah. it really doesn't seem like it matters to me who they play in the first round. Like, you know, they're going to... If they drop down to the wild card, maybe you have to play the Rangers... Is that any worse than playing the Panthers or the Bruins or like right. know, whatever? To me, it's a it's the same level of underdog for me against yeah. anyone the Leafs play in the first round. I, I, I just no the losing does make me think about the Rangers a little bit. Like Tampa's hot, could they catch yeah. the Leafs? Probably not. But um, um, yeah. well, it was I was gonna say we were talking about the defensemen and we were being a little bit critical. I do think that you know tree living. I was just looking at the ice time for the guys tonight. I do think that the tri living, uh, the gamble with sticking with Lilligren and Keith talking about how they've never given him a chance to, you know, play uh, after the deadline that they've always kind of brought in a replacement for him, and yep. I want to see how it what it does for his confidence. I have to say, Borny, that he has been better since the deadline, and that he has sure. been noticeably more confident. And I know he's getting to play in the top power play unit. But like that one, he comes flying down off the wing and almost goes bar down. I was like, where was that? Yeah, great one? shot. Like, great where shot. was that one been? And, and I felt- couldn't help but think with the goalie out, he's getting those touches. Like yeah. whether you know whether it leads to confidence or not, it, it's real reps and real moments that just help you as a hockey player. And I admire that they are kind of saying for this decor to work, we need him to be relevant and giving him a chance, putting him in that spot to have success. So yeah, because he's we'll going to play advantage. He's going to play. It's very clear with the way they're doing the, ra- the the rotations here. We're not heading into the first round where they're like, Lilligren's coming out again. Like He's yeah. the, one of their two right shot guys. He's going to play. He played almost 22 minutes tonight. Like he Jeez, is one please. of, he is, which is a also a big time comment on where this least decor is right yes, at the moment. I was going to say. But uh, yeah. he's going to play. When the playoffs <laughs> start, we're not having the conversations about him coming out anymore. He's no. playing. So I yeah. thought he, thought he would look good tonight. So I, I was uh, just going through the sport logic stuff they send me post game. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe the most notable thing tonight: a puck in the ozone time. Leafs at twenty eight minutes. Philly just below twenty. Um, high danger chances were fourteen to five for the Leafs. Yeah, you know there was a lot. The the chances thing here. We got a little pack for you. Ping crossbar. You know the Leafs on on some of these nights. Some nights a lot of these go in. Sam. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why they led with. That's why I led with my first take of being like, if I'm just a fan, like, yeah, the Leafs are clearly way better than that team. It's a team that needed that bad. They got some luck, and we lost. Like, you yeah. know, I, I'm sure that's what all the Leaf players are resting their head on the plane thinking about. They're not like, oh my god, what a heartbreaker that was. It's like we obviously are way better. We just didn't get any luck. So I, you, I hate that Philly people who like the Tortorella move oh, right. are going to feel vindicated by this, but you know what it is? It's a sugar rush. They, they got their short-term bur- boost and all you did was lose your captain's love for his coach. No big deal. Yeah. You just drove a rift between your, your captain of your team and the legendary coach, a legendarily mean coach that, you know, I don't know. I just like, they hit so many, po- what do you, 
what's the record for post hitting a game? I don't know, but they gave it a run today. How many what? more? How many more than six is it, Barney? I, like, I don't know. Can't be too many. But the, the thing is, like these aren't like gentle post rebounds. Like they, bang, you know, they banged shots off the inside of the post tonight. So Arison got got away with one tonight. Yeah, and here's Bobby McMahon again, just breaking away. Chance to had him all the way. Puck rolled on him a little bit. So yeah. to me, it's very hard to be you know, super critical. And I'm sure our co-host tomorrow will find oh. ways to be critical, but that, I mean, that's another unbelievable move by, by Nylander. But yeah, um, I just, the thing that does annoy me the most about this and you nailed it. I was going to bring it up. I'm glad you mentioned it. This would have been such a juicy narrative to hate on towards tomorrow. You have a three, <laughs> you have a three zip lead. You're trying yeah. to lock it down in the third period. You blow it without your, like all, you know, all world defensively center and Couturier, who's like calling card is how good he is defensively. You yeah. scratch Mark Stahl, who's like this veteran defenseman and you can't hold down a lead and the Leafs come back and beat you. That would have been like, that's why I was rooting so hard for them to win this tonight. Just, just so really we could, from a media we standpoint, could, we got no, robbed. <laughs> no, no, just want to dunk all over torts. Who, I, know. I see him on the bench. I'm like, I can't stand this guy. But yeah, yeah. it was, it was, uh, that was a tough one. All right, man. You got anything else in your notebook? Yeah. The what what happened about the the goalies in the warm up? What happened in the goal? Well, you know. saw that like because they it was Wall didn't warm up. Wall wasn't the backup tonight. Yeah, and they didn't well, talk and, about it at all. Well, we we said on our show today, like one of the reasons it could be Wall is maybe that last start didn't agree with them in, in Boston. But they like they did the pregame interview with Keith, and I don't know if it was I don't know if Keith spoken or addressed it or whatever. I don't know if it was a taped interview because he was just like, yeah, Wall, we're splitting the starts here or whatever. Maybe they just sent Wall to Washington already. I don't know, but yeah. like I would have liked a little deeper dive on what was going on there with Martin. Jones. Like they did, they did not mention it once the entire broadcast. I was like, what what's going on here? I was a little confused yeah. by that. That's a great one. We're going to go ahead and dig into that and have more information for you tomorrow. On Real Did, I, don't know if, I don't know if Keith spoke or, or whatever they mentioned it, but it was just a little weird because, you know, a guy, uh, a guy that's had the history of wool yeah. when he's like all of a sudden, not the backup, it's you're like, Oh years. boy. And then yeah. it's, and it's, you know, it's Samsonov's with eight goals in the last two games. You're like, Oh boy. But he's not what you Mar need. Marjo could be in the net tomorrow. Keep stay tuned, everyone. Yeah. All um, right. by the way, Matthews was second in the league in post hit going into the game with 12. Uh, and he's now, yeah, so he would have caught McDavid for first in the league. So, I mean, that to me is just he shoots it all the time. He's really good. Like, I, I don't yeah. think it's like, oh, well, he's so robbed. He could have had this many more. It's hockey. Yeah. Guys hit the post. It's not like I, I actually feel like that's a low number. I'm surprised it's only 12 or 13. Oh, he leads. Oh my God, Jobo, where are you getting these stats, bro? Are you <laughs> amazing. leads the league and crossbars hit with four? So does that count? So is it sixteen? Like, is it a fingers and a thumb? Is it the same thing? What are we doing? Here? <laughs> Splitting hairs here, yeah. They oh, actually count yeah. the elbow as a separate metric. He's got three <laughs> off the elbow. Yeah, yeah. that's all good. right. Well, if you if you're all good, I'm all good. Yeah, I'm all good, buddy. Lots more to talk about tomorrow. Yep, and then we're back at it. Uh, Washington Capitals tomorrow night. You yeah. and JD back on it after that game. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us on SN+. This has been, and let me say it right, Leafs Talk. There thanks go. for listening.